At the end of each payroll year, your employees are required to fill out a tax return, and as part of that, they'll also need you to tell them what they've earned for the year and how much tax you deducted. In order to prepare the print payment summaries, we need to find out first which figures we're going to be reporting. And the first thing we need to go is to go to the reports section at the top of the screen, the index to reports, and for the payroll, there are three reports I look at. The first one is the activity summary. If I click on activity summary, and then customize because I want to determine what information is shown, click customize, and I'll tell it I want it for the whole year for all employees. The year I'm currently looking at is a year from the 1st of July 2012 to the 30th of June 2013. If I click display, it will tell me that the wages I've got for the whole year are 9,582, deductions 130, the taxes paid 1,321, leaving a net for 8,131 to the employees. Print that off and keep it near you. Click close and then the second report is the register summary. If I click on register summary and customize, it asks me what period do I want. Do I want the period from July or if I use the Dropbox, the period year to date. I'll take it for year to date, and it's asking me on the right hand side, the payroll year. The current payroll year is 2013. And again, it's for all employees. Click display, and it tells me that I have the wages of 9582, deductions of 130, taxes 1321, and the net pay of 8131. Exactly the same figures as are put out in the activity register. If there is a difference, you have a problem. What has happened is someone has been into the register and changed a figure. This is not a recommended practice. NYOB keeps the same information in two places. If they don't agree, someone has changed one of those places. You'll need to go back and find out where the differences are. If all else fails, call for help. An NYOB certified consultant will be delighted to come along and help you find the problem. Since both figures agree, we can then move on to the third report. I'll close that one. And the third report I look for is a bit further down this list, the payroll summary for the year. If I click payroll summary and customize, I can tell it's for the year to date, and I can also tell it the date period. The payroll year is this year, and I click display. And this will come up and it will tell me, I'll widen the report on the screen, that the same figures appear again, I have 9,582 for all the wages, 130 in deductions, and my tax is 1,321. The same figures again, but this is the important information that I need for the next stage, which will be making my payment summaries. I'll click close here, but I would suggest you print it out and keep it next to your computer. Click close, close again, and we are now going to print the payment summaries. If I click on print payment summaries, it will ask me what sort of forms do I wish to produce. The ones it defaults to, the individual non-business and employment termination payment, are the ones I want to send out. Click next, and up will come a screen giving my company information. I have on there the company name and my trading name, my street address, the suburb number, name, the state and the postcode, and underneath that the contact details. The contact details for name, a phone number, an email address, the ABN and with, or withholder payer number, just put your ABN number in, and the authorised signatory Fred Smith. You do not have to sign all the pay slips, the 
payment summaries. If I click next, it will take me onto the page where I need to say which categories of wages go into which area. In my gross payments on the left hand side, I want to put in all the information that came off the last report I got in its appropriate column. In gross payments would go things like back pay, base hourly, base salary, any bonuses, commissions, holiday leave loading, holiday pay, holiday pay, any long service leave, any overtime, any sick pay, any unused holiday pay, and so on. What does not go in there? Things which are not part of the income. So for example, advances, which showed up on the payment uh, summary report, do not go into gross payments. If my employees have allowances, for example, a travel allowance, if I click on the allowance one, I can put in the description there of what the allowance is. And then I can tick the appropriate item over here on the right hand side. If I've got any salary sacrifice, by the way, that needs to be ticked in the gross payments area as well. Do I have any lump sum payments? Do I have any workplace giving? I don't have any set up. If I click, I can move down the left hand side. Do I have any union fees? Any professional associations? If I have a union fee, then I need to put in a description of which union it is. The only one that will be ticked for me is the total tax withheld the first time I do it. My PAYG withholding. Having ticked them all, I made sure that all the ones that appear on the on the report summary, I click next. And it then asks me, do I have any reportable employer super? In my case, no. But if I did, I would need to click on link superannuation categories. And this will bring up a list of the additional superannuation categories that need to appear here. For example, salary sacrifice needs to be shown, I believe. The other items, your tax advisor can help you fill this out. Superannuation guarantee though does not normally get ticked on here. Superannuation guarantee is a normal payment. If I click OK, we can continue. There are no reportable employer superannuation contributions. And if I click Next, I then have any reportable fringe benefits. The reportable fringe benefits, they get reported to the Australian Taxation Office on the 31st of March each year, and they need also to be shown on the payment summaries put out on the 30th of June for your employees. I don't have any reportable fringe benefits, click Next. I then come up with the employees and I can determine who do I wish to print the payment summaries for and who do I want to save the payment summaries for. In the tax file number, if they aren't there, it will not let me proceed. If I want to save the payment summaries, if I click on the appropriate button, it will ask me where do I want to save them. It will create its own file called Payment Summaries, which will appear in the MYOB folder, and it will produce a PDF of each and every employee's payment summaries. If I click Save, it'll take a little while to work its way through, but now they're all done. It will tell me my income summaries were saved. I didn't have any eligible termination payment summaries. It won't do them. Click OK. I would now print them off for all my employees and hand them out. Click Next. And it will come up with a summary. Does that summary agree with the information I have on the summary of the pays for the year? The total tax withheld, 1321, is the same figure as I had. The total wages I had was 9582, 
but that included $1,000 in advances. My gross payments to my employees were $8,582. That is the figure. The number of records, four. When looking at this, you may find that there is a small difference between the total gross payments as reported on the payment summaries and the total gross payments that is reported here. The reason for that is that this rounds down to the next dollar amount. And you may find that the odd cents on each person's gross pay adds up. If I've got 50 employees, I would expect a variance of, say, about $25. Maybe, maybe not. If it's about that, I probably don't worry too much what went wrong. Click Next, and it will ask me if I want to create the EmpDupe file. The EmpDupe file is an electronic version of the payment summaries you have just created. When you click on the button, Create the EmpDupe file, it will ask you where do you want to save the file. I would suggest somewhere like your desktop or with the payment summaries. It's a place where I normally create the EmpDupe file and save it. What you will need the EmpDupe file and how you send it to the tax office. The electronic commerce interface is a way of communicating electronically with the tax office. Open up the electronic commerce interface, find your EmpDupe file. The ECO electronic commerce interface will check that it is a valid file and you can then send it to the tax office. A lot easier than handwriting payment summaries and sending copies to the tax office. I don't think they want them. <laughs> Having done that, click Next. And we have now finished doing the payment summaries. At this stage, I would now make a backup of the company file. And rather than record it as normal, a PRM, and the month and the day, I would actually call it payroll year end file, copy. And I normally mark it do not use. Make a backup that way. I also normally take a copy of the actual file itself because it's easier to just go straight into an open file than to restore the backup. Normal backup procedure with a modification to identify the file correctly as the end of payroll year. Having done that, I would now finish to close the assistant. And having done that, what I would need to do now, because I assume that having done the payment summaries, we are now about to roll over the payroll year end. We would then roll over the payroll year end, ready for the next year's processing.